Turn to someone, tell them, you look good to me this morning. <laughs> if they are frowning, tell them, smile, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wonderful. You are all welcome. It's good to be together in the house of the Lord. And as we go into the word of God, I want you to open your spirit. It's going to be a simple message. But if you can grasp this, your life will never be the same. Do you hear me? The simplicity of the gospel is powerful. Yeah? It doesn't have to be complicated. Amen. So I want to share with you what I call the wonders of belief. Somebody say the wonders of belief. How many believers do we have here? Okay, wonderful. So you are, you get ready for wonders then. Get ready for wonders. So when I say the wonders of belief, so we have believe and we have belief. Okay? Now, belief, that's B-E-L-I-E-F. That is a noun. Okay? Now, but to believe, that's a verb. Okay? And you know, if those of you that went to school, <laughs> you know what a verb is, right? It's a doing word. That's right. Yes. So it's a doing word. Just let's just pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for your word which is spirit and is life. Jesus possesses lips of clay. Communicate your counsel to your people. Lord, my God, let it come with simplicity. Let it come with clarity. Let it bring light. Let it bring understanding. Let it bring establishment. Oh, my Lord and my God, I thank you, Father, I give you praise. Every spirit of unbelief, I bind right now. In the name of Jesus, I bind every generational unbelief. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break the power, the power of unbelief. The unbelief of this generation is going to be powerless in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Now, I want you to know that our world is being programmed to be unbelieving. Okay? Yeah, we're being programmed by the world. The world system is programming people not to believe. Now, if you are not aware... There is a serious agenda for your soul. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. There is a serious agenda. Satan has an agenda for your soul. He has an agenda for your faith. He has an agenda for your eternity. Okay? And your belief is going to determine how your life goes. Are you following me? 
Yeah. It's very simple, and God has made it simple, but it's amazing. How many people, what would you say is the greatest miracle? Anybody? She says salvation. Is there somebody that, that knows a greater miracle? Healing? Is it greater than salvation? The greatest. Salvation. Okay. Now, if, if we are going to walk with God, with the God of wonders, how many people know that salvation is a wonder? Did you know that? It is a wonder. Because within the split of a second, in the twinkling of an eye, a new creation happened within the, within the twinkling of an eye. Nanoseconds. There was a particular kind of person then because of the power of belief, a new person. Say, what a wonder. Yeah? Yes. Let's look at Second Corinthians. Um, okay, no. Should we? Let's, let's start from Romans. Okay, let's start from Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. How many people know that verse? Okay, tell me. <laughs> God bless you. You got it. Come on, give a hand. Woo. <laughs> Fushani, you are doing a good job. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Whether you are the one that did it or not, you can get the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says, for if we confess... If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and what? Believe in your heart that what? God has raised him from the dead. What will happen? How can salvation be so easy? How can such a wonder be so easy? How can the greatest miracle, the greatest wonder, the wonder that angels are beholding and they are in awe, how can it be so easy? Incredible. And then verse 10, he says, for what? With, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So everybody, both Old Testament and New Testament, needed belief. They needed to believe. Amen? Amen? Now, if this can recreate you, tell me what situation cannot be changed. Tell me what situation is more difficult than salvation. The Bible says the heavens are the works of his fingers. Okay? 
But the arm of the Lord brought him salvation. So it took God more energy to bring salvation than to create the heavens. Than to create the universe. Are you getting my point? It took God more to bring about salvation than to create the universe. They are the works of his fingers. <laughs> but when it came to salvation, the Bible says the arm. He needed his muscular strength. For every other thing, he didn't need muscular strength. <laughs> His fingers. Sometimes he would just speak. But when it came to salvation, it was a different thing. Different thing. Totally different. Okay? So, it is the greatest miracle. It is the greatest wonder. But look at how it happened. Look at how you achieved salvation. Or you attained salvation. Or you received salvation. Look at how you got it. With the heart. One believes. If you can get the wonder of belief, there's nothing there's nothing that cannot be changed. Nothing in life. Every other thing is too small. It's too small. Amen. And the word to believe is not just is not just something you do mentally. No. It is a hard thing. You have to believe in your heart. That's what he says. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. So, as you believe, it it does a work inside you that takes you from unrighteousness to righteousness. The word righteousness, simply put, is right standing with God. So from your belief, your status is changed. Before you believed, you were in a, another kingdom. The kingdom of darkness. You were destined for hell. There was nothing, there was no good work that could take you off that path. You get my point? No good work. Charity cannot save you. Philanthropy will not save you. Although it is, it is good to do it. Because Jesus did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus had a powerful benevolence ministry. That's why he had Judas. He had Judas to take care of that. <laughs> powerful. He had so much that he could trust a thief with it as a treasurer. Uh, and he's still, and, and he, I mean, it's amazing. So, I want you to see that you were in one kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. Because in Colossians it says he has conveyed us, he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Hallelujah. 
we were darkness. We were actually darkness personified. But in, with the power of belief, and I'm not just talking about unfounded belief that the new age teaches, just believe in yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Yes, Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Let's read it in the King James. The authorized King James Version. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. So in God's empire, Jesus has a kingdom. The father gave him a kingdom and you were translated because you were already locked up in another kingdom. Thanks to Adam. You were locked up in that kingdom. But God sends Jesus and God makes it simple. But the fact that it's simple does not mean it is cheap. Do you get my point? Because sometimes we on the mind, we, 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 we undervalue certain things because they are simple. So God made it so simple so that nobody has any excuse. Nobody. Because just believe. With the heart and confession, confess your mouth. It's like the thief on the cross. He just believed. And then he spoke. He just asked for mercy on the cross. In one moment, a thief who deserved to be, to be crucified Next to an innocent person who didn't deserve to be on the cross. In one moment, those translations say the power of belief. The, power of belief. the wonders of belief. The of belief. Hallelujah. So he was immediate. He says, Jesus turns to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, his colleague remained. He didn't believe. He said he mocked the Savior. He mocked the one that had the keys of eternal life. He mocked the door to enter in. Jesus says, I'm the door. He mocked the door, and so he couldn't get in. Imagine you, you, want, you are trying to get in here and you get to the door and you look at the door and say, look at this nonsense door. And you start making fun of the door. And you say, how, how can I pass through this kind of door? Look at this door. And you just keep talking, talking. Now, there's, you can't get in here. So far as you continue to mock and dishonor the door, you can't get in. And that's how it is with the things of the Spirit. So, Satan is on an assignment. Okay, he has assigned agents all over the world, all over the net, to help you to mock the door. So that you don't get in. So that you miss what God has ordained for you. <laughs> Yes? So you were translated. In, Colossians, um, in Corinthians, he says that we were darkness. We were darkness. So I'm not just exalting belief on its own. But your belief has to be based on something. You get my point? 
It's like somebody just waking up today, a man just believes that he's a woman. Now, does that make him a woman? No, no, he, do, he doesn't. He, the, the, you can believe it from now till you die. It doesn't change it. Because that belief is not founded on the truth. You get my point? Yeah, so what the enemy is doing is that he's giving people wrong premises upon which to base their beliefs and he's trying to mess up their belief system so that he can rob them. He did it with Eve and it worked. And he hasn't stopped since then. In fact, not just with Eve, he did it in heaven with some angels. It worked. Then in the garden, he did it, and it worked. Do you think he will stop? He can't stop. So, oh, Pastor, the devil, the devil is going to kill me. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Who told you I'm going to die? The devil told me. And then you believe it. So whatever you believe, with your heart, it starts changing your reality from the p- point of belief. It's from the point of belief. Before you even say it, before you say it with your mouth, from the point of believing, that's where changes start happening. Why? Because you believe, from, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So, believing. When you believe, it starts affecting things. It starts affecting things. If you want to get out of the rot of whatever it is you found yourself in, you can't do it without belief. Because if you could get out of, out of the slave market of sin, If you could get out of darkness, if you could get out of the kingdom of darkness through belief, there's nothing you can get out of through belief. You get my point? There's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. But your belief needs to be based on something concrete. Okay, so if you if if you want to if if <laughs> isn't it interesting when you, when you hear how they inter, when they interview some people who are you know successful in this world they've had the so called success of the world and they say what tell us what is the secret of your success just believe in yourself. Come on. Just believe in yourself. I wish it were that simple. How many people believe in themselves and are still down there? (laughs) Yeah. Believe in yourself. Okay, you've believed in yourself and you find you're still there. Still in that hole. Because self is already messed up. You understand? Self is already messed up. You can't base your progress just in that. So, no, I'm not saying you should doubt yourself. But, I, you know, sometimes I'm amused when I listen to some people and I hear things and I'm just, I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. You know, they sound very intelligent. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you just see that this is nonsense. These people, <laughs> these people can't see. They can't see that this is nonsense. And they're clapping. Ah. 
Ignorance is deadly. May God destroy your ignorance. In the name of Jesus. God should punish your ignorance. <laughs> it would never come back. May your ignorance be damaged beyond repairs. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. My people perish. Not for weakness. <laughs> it's for lack of knowledge. We don't perish because the enemy is strong. That's not why we perish. It's lack of knowledge. So, your belief must be based on the word of God. Okay? Must be based on the word of God. If it's not based on the word of God, ah, I don't know what to say. Hallelujah. So, let's look at uh, Genesis. Okay, let's look at Genesis chapter 15. I hope you can see the way out of that situation you are in now. I hope the light is coming on in your heart. I hope you can see. He says the entrance of the word brings light. It gives understanding to the simple. Okay? Now, remember our father Abraham. God called him from all of the Chaldeans right there from present-day Iraq area and told him, I'll, I'll, go, I'll show you, I'll take you to a land that, you know, um, leave your father's house, leave your, 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 your country to a land that I will show you. And he follows, right? And, and Sarah is, is barren. And God has said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. He says, I'll bless all the families of the earth through you. Some amazing promises God made to Abraham. And the odds were against him. Time was not in his favor. Sarah's biological clock was ticking and ticking every day. She would come, A.B., A.B., what are we going to do? <laughs> No, that's just me. Please, the Bible didn't say that. <laughs> Actually, the Bible says that she calls him my Lord. <laughs> Not A.B., but, you know. <laughs> yeah. So the biological clock is ticking. Time is going. And it's like, what, how is this thing going to happen? Right? And, and Abraham, well, it was, a, it was a tough one for him because culture, culturally, um, at the time, if you, did, if you couldn't have a child, your maid could have children for you and the child would be yours. Your slave can have children for you and the child will be yours. Everyone born in your household is yours. All right? Whether by hook or by crook. <laughs> you see that in the, in the, in the, in the life of uh, Jacob. Yes. Don't try it today. <laughs> Don't you dare try it. Because I've seen some people on the internet quoting that to try to support some kind of lasciviousness. Don't believe them. Okay? It doesn't apply today. Don't do someone say it doesn't apply today. <laughs> now look at Genesis 15. 
After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord, what will you give me, seeing that I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliza, Eliezer of Damascus. So another tradition was that if you didn't have any child, okay, your the, 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 the firstborn servant in your house becomes your son. So it becomes your firstborn. You know? So he's, he's quoting the prevailing situation to God. Is it Eliezer of Damascus that's going to be my heir? But God answered, he says, uh, Verse 4, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven. Count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. So shall your descendants be. Okay. Then look at verse 6. Let's read it together. One, two, three. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Come on. Can you see? Romans. Paul was quoting from here. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Abraham didn't do anything to become righteous. He just believed. He just believed. He believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him. He credited it to him. He credited it to him for righteousness. So your belief can give you access. To what you don't have. You get my point. Your belief is so powerful. It can credit your account. That's why Satan attacks your belief system. He, he works over time. And in these days that we're living in. It's going to be worse. Many will depart from the faith because they stopped believing. Hallelujah. You know, I told you the other time, once saved, always saved is not a biblical doctrine. Run away from that trash. He that endures to the end, you have to believe to the end. You cannot believe and stop believing halfway and still end up at the destination. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You want to journey, you are going to Pulukwani. And then, you know, you, you haven't even gone far. You just get to, to Pretoria. You, you get to Hamaskra and then you know, you are so tired. <laughs> you are so tired. And then you see some very friendly people there. And then they invite you. And you enter, and you sit down, and you eat, and you sleep. And you start, you know, they give you something to do. And you start earning there. Huh? But because you believe before you left, somehow by divine miracle, you will just end up in Polokwane, even though you are still in Hamaskra. Come on, what a wonder. <laughs> there is what the Bible calls lying wonders. Lying wonders. Yeah. 
There's one that the Bible calls lying wonders. That's a lying wonder. So you remain there, you are enjoying the pleasures of Hamaskra. And then in your mind, you believe you will end up in Polokwane. Impossible. That's how once saved, always saved is. As ridiculous as this one is, that's how, it's, in the spirit is even more ridiculous. That you can think that because you started the journey, you will definitely end there if you don't continue. What a deception is this. I know some of your respectable theologians have taught otherwise. Um, when they meet the Lord, they will explain to him this mystery, this wonder. <laughs> but I'll rather be safe and keep going. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I get to Hamaskra, I'm tired. I continue. I can drink water and continue. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I continue. I stop at the, at the, yeah, Transco, and then buy something, Amen. and we continue. Amen. Imagine you just stop, and then you don't continue. And then you think you will end there. No. You have to believe to the end. Turn to someone and say, you have to believe to the end. Never stop believing. You know why some people don't experience miracles? They believe a little bit. They don't continue believing. They stop believing halfway. And then they expect a miracle at the end. What kind of lies is that? Let's not be like that. Hallelujah. So Abraham believed in the Lord and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was laid to his account. Righteousness was not credited to his account. There is what God wants to credit to your account. But he's waiting for your belief. He's waiting for your belief to line up. He's waiting for your belief. Instead of going and accusing God of what he didn't do. Instead of going and saying, but if God is there, how come this is happening to me? How come you stop believing? Why did you stop believing? Pick up your belief. And continue. Hallelujah. Never stop believing. Amen? Amen? God spoke to Abraham and he believed. Now, some of us, God speaks to us, we believe for a moment. And then you see some storms. Then you stop believing. And you start getting angry. When God told Abraham this, did, he, did, did God give Abraham a timeline? God didn't give him a timeline. So when God makes a promise to you, if he did not give you a timeline, don't put timeline to it. Why do you do that? Don't. Stop it. Talk to someone and say, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's not good for you. Yeah. If he did not give you a timeline, just keep believing. Yes. Keep believing. Hallelujah. Yes. I will believe in my last breath. Yes. I'll keep believing. What are you saying? So that's where we miss God. But you can see that just by believing with the heart, You become righteous. And then confessing with your mouth, you become saved. Huh. God is not asking for too much. He's not asking for much. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible 
only believe. But you know what? Our mind tells us, believe for two weeks. If it doesn't happen in two weeks, it's impossible. You see, can you see how we get into trouble with God? We believe for two weeks. Or two months. My endurance is expiring, Lord. (laughs) If you don't do this now, Lord, I am warning you, Lord. I am warning you, Lord. If you don't come through to me, it's 90 days now. It's almost 90 days. This thing has not happened. You told me this. I'm waiting. <laughs> you know that God is not moved by those things. He's not moved. Do you know that Abraham was a friend of God? Huh? That's, that's the one man the Bible calls friend of God. He was a friend of God, and yet he waited for 25 years. A friend. A friend. Huh? You would have thought because they are friends, God will now shorten it for him. (laughs) Then we now come. Huh? <laughs> the ink that you wrote the promise on is has not even dried. <laughs> the ink that you used to write to write the promise has not even dried. You're already getting. What's wrong with us? Turn to someone and say, Why are we like this? What's wrong with us Christians? Why? We need to grow up. Amen? Amen. We need to what? Grow up. up. Because it's children that behave like that. It's children that behave like that. I remember those days, my son... (laughs) <laughs> last born he was still you know he was still a toddler his mom had gone out gone somewhere I think to the shop or so and I was with him and he was crying he would say I'm hungry daddy I'm hungry okay alright let me make conflicts for you I put him down and I'm you know I'm getting I stretch my hand to the cupboard to bring down the conflicts and then to go to the fridge to get the milk. I'm telling you, it was like. <laughs> it was as if I was keeping it for 10 years. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I said, wait, I'm making it. I'm making it. Ah, ah. I said, I am making it. Wait, it's, it's coming, it's coming. Look at it. This is it. This is it. Ah, ah. Until I gave him, and he put it in his mouth. (laughs) You see? So I'm telling you, that's how we are to God. That's how we are to God. That's how we are to God. God says, okay, I'm working on it. And he said, no, 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 I can't wait. It's been, it's been five hours now. That conflicts, it doesn't take five minutes to make conflicts. It doesn't take five minutes. But it was, it was a crisis. It was a crisis moment. That's how many of God's children are. Hmm? But the same person now, he will pray and wait for God. 
Lord, I need this. I need this. I said, Dad, I need this. Oh, well, better talk to the Lord. He will pray. He will be consistent. He will wait. And God will come through. You see, he has learned to believe God, to wait on the Lord, and to keep believing while waiting. You don't stop believing while waiting. You see, the problem is that we stop believing. So when you stop believing, you are going back to square one. You are beginning again. So you think if you... Like the Israelites in the wilderness. They will die in the wilderness. 40 years. And God is still looking. Looking at their tantrums. Looking at their foolishness. He says, okay, continue. Your children that you are crying about, they are the ones that will enter. As for you, your carcasses. Yeah. So, you see, there is power in your belief. That's why the enemy wants it. You see, he will come to you. Did God really say? Did he say? Now, if God really said, how come? You know what? How you respond to him? Mind your business. It's between I and my father. It's none of your business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how you should respond to him. None of your business. Look at how he tried to dissuade Jesus. Through Peter. The father has told Jesus the plan. He's going to go to the cross. He will suffer. He will be killed. He will die and he will rise. Jesus tells his disciples. Peter takes him aside. He said, Lord, far be it. This, this thing you are talking about is nonsense. All this going to the cross and all that. We don't need that. You are here. You can see all the great things you are doing. We must just continue these things. Because he's thinking of his position in the kingdom. Because he believes that Jesus is going to set up this kingdom and he will dethrone Caesar. And you know, Peter will be one of his right hand men. So he's thinking about that. And Jesus is now coming to say, well, I'm going to die. What is, what, die what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Jesus immediately saw it. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. You don't care about the things of God. Only the things of man. That's why you see that there are people, you try to change their lives. You, 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 you. You, you try to change their lives, but you don't address their beliefs. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You need to get to the belief. Because belief determines behavior. Do you get my point? Yeah. So why do you want to correct behavior without correcting belief? If somebody is doing something... Find out why he's doing it. There is something he believes that is making him do what he's doing. Hallelujah. So somebody is hooked on drugs and all of that and you go to him, you just say, look, stop drugs, stop drugs. Now, that doesn't stop it. He has to be brought to a place where he starts seeing that this is not okay. Do you understand? When he now starts believing that there's a better way to live. When he starts believing that there's a better way to live than to pop things, you know, and get high. There is what can make you higher than high. And that's called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I want to be high on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when you correct that belief, then the behavior will start changing. I've worked, I've, I've noticed it for decades now. What I'm telling you is real. 
So getting angry at somebody doesn't change a person. Getting, you know, I'm not talking about uh, a child. I'm talking about grown up. Because a child, the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. The rod of correction drives it out. So the child doesn't have, his belief system has not been built yet. But for an adult, he has the power of belief. That's why one of the signs of the last days is that people will believe a lie. God sent, because people refuse the truth, God now sends them a delusion. Okay, if you read Romans 1, you see there. He sends them a delusion so that they believe a lie. Believe a lie. So God says, okay, you don't believe a lie? Let me help you. Hmm? You refuse the truth? Okay, let me help you. Delusion. You have permission. And that's whoop. And then they now come up with 100 genders. This delusion that is at work. Delusion. All in the name of inclusivity. Well, God bless, God bless the word of God in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. May the word of God be blessed in your life. May the word of God be blessed in your heart. May your beliefs be founded on the word of God. Amen. Believe in, in, in for, for Abraham when he believed. It was not just an intellectual experience. Do you understand? He put his trust in God. He put his confidence in God. Because that's, that's, that's the Hebrew word for belief. Anon. Right? It's put confidence in God. Trust. So he put his trust not in a concept, in a person. Look at me, in a person. Glory to God. So your belief must be in Jesus. You need to trust him with your soul. Trust him with your salvation. Hallelujah. It's your belief in him that makes you saved. It's your belief in him that gives you access. <laughs> yeah. So there are some people who used to believe, stop believing. There is no unbeliever that can get into heaven. Read Revelation, it tells you that. The unbelieving will not get in. Okay? They stop believing. But then there are some unbelievers who don't believe. And then at the last minute, believe and die. Who will enter? The one that believed at the end. <laughs> you see? The one that died believing. That's right. The one that died believing. Get in. The one that died disbelieving. But believes a lie. And their life shows you they don't believe. Because if you believe, there's a way you live. Believe. Affects behavior. It determines behavior. There's none of you sitting here that is sitting here and you don't believe in listening to the word of God. You don't believe in fellowship of the saints. And you are here. You all are here because you believe. Am I correct? So I'm commending you for that, but believe to the end. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. You cannot keep a marriage for life if you don't stop believing. The, uh, are you awake? <laughs> okay, let me put it this way. <laughs> for you, to be married for life, you must believe for life in marriage. You get my point? If you believe in marriage for 10 years, and then you stop believing for 10 years. Okay? 
If you believe in the wrong person, you will hang with the wrong person. Come on. Yeah, you hang with the wrong person. If you believe this person, this monster is for you. If you believe this monster is an angel sent from heaven, what are you going to do? You will embrace the monster, you will live with the monster, and you keep believing in the monster. Because your belief is it, it affecting your Come on. But if there is an angel and you don't believe in this angel, nothing can make you to commit to what you don't believe. Are you getting my point? If you don't believe in someone's leadership, there is no way you will submit to it. Believe the team is everything. You see that? It's fundamental to all of life. Not only for salvation. If you don't believe or if you believe in poverty and you win a lotto, that's my chance. That's my millions. You go and scratch, and then boom, 45 million. Oh, now the, the belief has not changed. Okay? The money has come in. Can he sustain it? He will blow it. That's why, on average, in five years, Six years, they are back to where they were. Some even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Less than that, yeah. So why? Because belief was ignored. So sometimes you major on the outward things of life. And you don't pay attention to your beliefs. So it doesn't matter how anybody comes. Maybe the person has pity on you. The person looks at you. He's, he's compassionate. And the person does so much for you. If your belief has not changed. You will be back there. Your life will always remain at the level of your belief. There's no miracle that can take you beyond your belief. Do you get my point? If you can get this, there's nothing in life that you cannot change. Amen? The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not so much believing in myself, but I believe in the one that is inside me. Do you understand me? So that's why I don't see any impossibility. Everything is possible. It might take long, but taking long doesn't make, mean it is impossible. It just means that the gestation period for this particular miracle is longer. All right? Because the gestation period for an elephant is not the same as that of a rat. So you can't use the gestation period of a rat to now begin to judge the elephant. I say, look at you. Others have delivered how many? You are still here. It's been two years now. You are still carrying this thing. The rat has even forgotten that it had babies. You get my point. So you stop believing because you encountered a rat. Meanwhile, you are not a rat. Someone say, I'm not a rat. 
I don't know how you see me, but let me just tell you, I'm not a rat. <laughs> I believe it's clear. You got the message. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for your word. Your word, which is spirit and is life. I release the wonders of belief. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. And you will be established. Yes. Believe in his prophets and you will prosper. That's what the Bible says. Believe in the Lord and you'll be established. Whatever it will take to establish your people, I release that right now into their lives. In the name of Jesus. Whatever situation needs to be changed, Lord, I release what it takes in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you're here, you want to get born again, I want to pray for you and also those watching online. If you raise your hand, I'll pray for you. Anybody, you want to receive Jesus into your heart? You want to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth? Yes? Say this after me. Say, dear God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that he is Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a brand new person. Thank you, Lord. I receive you by faith. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your people who have prayed this prayer. I declare your kingdom over them. In the name of Jesus, the miracle of salvation, the miracle of translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the new creation realities activated in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you real good.